Hi, I'm Bill Kinney. This is the second in a series of videos I'm making about complex analysis and the second part of a sub-series about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. In this video, I'm going to go, go through what I did in the last one and focus on ultimately trying to understand geometrically what it means to add two complex numbers. As a brief review, I talked about the imaginary unit <clears throat> as something we create in math. We uh, create a, a new number system based on letting i equal the square root of negative 1, ignoring the fact that in the real number system there is no such number whose square is negative 1. A complex number is any number that can be written in this form, a plus b times i, where a and b are real numbers. a is the real part of the complex number, and b is the imaginary part of the complex number. Again, for emphasis, b not b times i, but b is the imaginary part of the complex number a plus b i. So both the real and imaginary part of that complex number are real numbers. A bit of notation here. <clears throat> we typically write r e for the real part of the complex number, and when we write r e of a plus b i, the real part of that would be a, and we typically write i m for the imaginary part of the complex number, and so therefore the imaginary part of a plus bi would be the number b. And again, a and b are both assumed to be real numbers, regular numbers, decimals, fractions that you are used to, both rational and irrational numbers. I said as far as um, doing this complex number addition here, we treat each of these complex numbers as if they are just expressions in this uh, quantity i in Mathematica, either a capital I or a fancy looking i, which you can create by doing escape, two i's, and escape, represent the complex number i, whose square is negative 1. And <clears throat> again, just treat these each as expressions, treating the i as a symbol, and essentially just add like terms. The terms without an i are the 3 and the 4. Those are the real parts. You add those together to get a 7 for the real part of the answer. The imaginary parts are 6 and 5. You add those together to get 11 for the imaginary part of the answer. In general, you could write the rule for addition like this. And this rule is going to satisfy all the properties you would want it to satisfy ultimately, like the associative property, the, um, the commutative property, and once we define multiplication, it will also satisfy the distributive property, but we haven't defined complex number multiplication yet. What I want to focus on right now is how to visualize what's going on with this addition. And the basic thing you need to know in Mathematica is list plot. List plot allows you to plot points in the plane. And so for example, just do a simple example here, I could plot the point 3 comma 6 in the plane I have to put that point in curly braces in Mathematica, <clears throat> treat it as a list with two elements in the list. And then when I use list plot, I have to put that point as well as any other points I, I want to plot within another list, within two other curly braces. And this will plot that point in the plane. There it is, the point 3, 6. And what I'm trying to get at here in using the point 3, 6 is the fact that in math in the, with complex numbers, like the complex numbers 3 plus 6i, there's a natural way to associate that complex number with a point in the plane, and that would be to take the real part and make it the first coordinate of the point 3, and the imaginary part 6 and make it the second coordinate of the point 6. And we can therefore imagine the point 3, 6 as representing the complex number 3 plus 6i. So this point right here, we imagine is representing the complex number 3 plus 6i. It is a part of this plane. We call it, when we imagine complex numbers in this way, we call this plane the complex plane. This axis is called the real axis because the real part of this complex number 3 is the first coordinate of the point, and we call this axis the imaginary axis because the second coordinate of this point, 6, is the imaginary part of the complex number. Maybe we should also label the axes that way. If I do axes label arrow, K, 
capital A, capital L, Mathematica is very case sensitive. And then in curly braces, and inside quotes, put real, comma, imaginary. It will label the axes in the way you would want it to with complex numbers. Notice that I re-entered this, that's fine, and got a new output, it updated it. Notice my in and out are, are very far away from number one or two or three or four. It's because I've been using Mathematica recently. Um, so it's kept track of all that I've done. It, just ignore that. Let's also plot the point 4, 5 corresponding to the complex number 4 plus 5i. I can put another point in here separated by a comma. By the way, I you should, if you're seriously watching these things, I think you should ultimately take notes and perhaps also have Mathematica open if you're using Mathematica uh, to try these things on your own, pause the video. It would be very good to, to do that. There we go. Uh, let's see, the point four five is in there. Okay, now it, it sort of messed up the axes for me. I can change that back by doing a plot range. Oh, and let's go negative. 15 to 15 in both the x and y directions. There's a shortcut for doing that, but I'm going to just show it to you like this. If I do plot range arrow, and if you didn't see how to make the arrow, you do a minus sign, then a greater than sign, and it turns into an arrow. Plot range capital P capital R arrow. Doing it like this will make the x window from negative 15 to 15 and the y window from negative 15 to 15. Like that. There we go, we see these two points in there. Let's add a third point for their sum. Let's see, the sum is 7 plus 11i, so I'm going to add the point 711. No pun intended if you know what 711 is. There we go, there's the third point. We can modify this a bit to add some color, for example, and we can increase the size of these points. Another comma in here, do plot style, capital P, capital S, arrow, uh, point size. If I make this point 0, 0.02, that'll make each point have an area, I believe, 2% of the total area. Uh, I don't know if it's quite that big, but it does make them bigger. Make it point 0, 0.03, it makes them even bigger. You can also embed this inside curly braces. Actually, double ones here, I think need if I'm going to do all of them the same and color this like put a red in there and put a comma and it makes them all red some other features here is that you can uh, make the scales on the horizontal and vertical axes the same by doing aspect ratio is another option you can add in here arrow uh, I think it's either one or automatic let me see what it looks like when I do one that looks right Sometimes automatic is a good thing to put there. And it just it gives us the same thing. Aspect ratio makes the scales on the axes the same. Um, okay, so I think what I'll do is pretty much end the video right here. And in the next video, I'll show you some more about Mathematica. But what I want you to notice here, let me also plot the origin. The complex number 0 plus 0i is the same as the number 0. And it's at the origin. And you'll notice if you look at this picture that it looks like these dots form a parallelogram. And that is indeed true. If you make the origin, make a point at the origin, make two points at the numbers you're going to add, and make a point at their sum, it will always form a parallelogram, though it could be a, a degenerate parallelogram that's just a line if the points happen to lie in the same line through the origin. That's a, that's a general fact about how to interpret geometric um, addition of complex numbers geometrically. You can also bring in ideas about vectors into this, and I'll, I will do that in the next video. But I encourage you to think about it for the moment.